Welcome to episode 9 of Gun Guides, where I show you how to get, use, and master every gun in Spiral Knights. I've saved the worst gun for last. It's time to cover Catalyzers. Catalyzers are bought the same way as Pulsars, through Brinks for 15 Bark Modules, with all the recipes being found from Basil in Arcade Runs. There are two lines for the Catalyzer, the Normal Damage line, ending in Neutralizer, and the Shadow Damage line, ending in Biohazard. The shadow damage line also deals poison. Catalyzers shoot three times before reloading, and their shots deal only one damage. But when they hit an enemy, they start orbiting around them for 20 seconds. These orbitals always start at the top and rotate counterclockwise. These attacks can only hit one enemy. You can't tag two enemies at the same time by shooting in between them. The charge attack charges very quickly, and fires a slow moving shot that deals damage in an area almost like a slower moving blaster charge. The charge also has no knockback. This gun is unique in that the basic attacks and the charge attack work hand in hand. The charge, when it hits an enemy, will detonate all of the tags on the enemy instantly, creating a separate explosion for each tag. The explosions are deceptively large, much larger than the size of the orbital itself. The tags work cross-gun too. So if you were to instance use a biohazard to apply tags to an enemy, you can use a 2 star catalyzer charge to detonate them. It even works across party members. If your teammate applies tags to an enemy, you can use your own charge to detonate them, and vice versa. Things can get pretty hectic if you're in a party with 4 people all using catalyzer lines. One thing to note is that catalyzer tags exploding do not cause other tags hit to explode. The only way to get tags to explode is with the charge itself. Getting to know certain thresholds for an enemy's health can be useful if you're trying to run with catalyzers. For instance, if you know that a jelly takes 4 tags plus a charge to kill it, you can make sure not to overcap on the tags to get the most efficient kills. Catalyzer lines are infamous for their huge knockback, but it's actually controllable to a certain degree. Each explosion from a tag is treated like a miniature bomb. If there are tags on the bottom of an enemy and you shoot a charge at it, the knockback will send the enemy upwards. Timing your charge with the orbitals can help distance enemies from yourself, which is always useful. Since each tag creates its own explosion, you can actually use the tags on one target to deal damage to surrounding enemies. To make the most out of this, you can use a suction bomb to get the AoE detonation damage to hit the maximum number of targets. If you don't have a suction bomb, you can always use shield bumps to reposition enemies before triggering the orbitals. If when you shoot the charge at an enemy, the orbitals are in a wall, they won't deal any damage. So make sure the enemies either aren't inside of a wall or the orbitals are clear from the wall before you shoot your charges. Aside from vortexes, you can also use torpor tantrum because when an enemy slept, tags don't actually wake them up. Tags have a few other neat uses. Applying tags to a gremlin stalker will cause it to become visible for, to a certain extent. And applying biohazard tags to a tier 3 gremlin mender, procking its shield, and then detonating them is a great way to get rid of the shield near instantly. If you need even more burst from catalyzers, you can also use things like deadly shadow cloak or frenzied firestorm. If you use either of these and then use the charge attack on an enemy with tags on them, the tags will all get the increased damage from your buff. The charge attack also has an invisible aura around it that detonates any tags it passes by. This training dummy has tags on it, and the charge I shoot misses the dummy itself, but its aura still makes contact with some of the tags. Whiffing the charge shot just past a tagged enemy so it can continue into more enemies is a great way to maximize damage. This gun has many quirks, but one of the most important is that if there are enough tags on an enemy, and a charge is shot at it, the knockback from the tags detonated by the charge's aura can push the enemies out of the way of the charge, allowing the charge to continue forward. The server sometimes has trouble keeping up with this fast enough, and the charge can become invisible, but it will still continue on its path. Here I fire a charge straight at a slag, but the knockback pushes it away from the explosions too quickly, and the charge continues on, invisible, until it hits this other slag. Aside from orbitals expiring, there are a few other ways enemies can get rid of them. If the enemy transforms, for example a devlight being promoted or a lichen combining, the tags will be lost. Also, in the unknown passage, or the boss fights in shadow lairs, if an enemy steps onto the swarm seed, orbs just won't work on them. 
probably due to a bug. Now, these guns are super fun, especially in a party, but that doesn't mean they're good. When a gun forces you to stand still to do damage, there needs to be some sort of reward attached. A Magnus charge deals enough damage to wipe out most enemies in one go. An autogun will deal thousands of burst damage in an AoE. But catalyzer charges are not only underwhelming, but they can be hard to hit because they travel so slowly and it takes far too long to prepare. Even if you can work your way around these downsides, their damage is not worth the risk compared to better, easier, and safer guns. On top of that, the damage on these guns is heavily bugged. Well, the biohazards line is safe, but the normal damage line of catalyzers have a bug affecting the damage from their tag explosions. This bug alone is so huge that it stops the gun from being usable almost at all. I have a video explaining how important the bug itself is, the only reason Neutralizer is worth using is its charge damage. While the tags are bugged, the charge deals the proper damage. If you want to deal the most possible damage with catalyzers against something like constructs or beasts, you have to use biohazard tags in combination with a neutralizer charge. It's pretty sad, but enemies in the undead or fiend family are just not enemies that catalyzers as a whole can deal any good damage to, aside from neutralizer charges. In their current state, these guns aren't practical at all, and are outclassed by even Antiguas, but probably not Torto guns. Neutralizer, I'm willing to say, is the single worst gun in the game due to just how low the damage is on its tags. That doesn't mean they can't be fun though. In a four-man party, having three designated taggers with one charger, or something along those lines, can be very entertaining. Catalyzers are just weapons to get if you've crafted everything else and are looking for something to have fun with. While they have the potential for huge burst damage, their lack of mobility, slow moving projectiles, and massive game breaking bugs keep them from ever being a good option. Which is a shame, because they have a lot of interesting mechanics. They're actually my favorite gun to use. This will be the last main video I'll be doing for this series, as the two after this will be the Owlite Wand and the Overcharged Mixmaster or the Celestial Orbit Gun which aren't weapons people can actually get their hands on very easily, and plus they're both super easy to use. As for more content, I've seen people ask for guides for unique variants, what to craft as a starting player, or more runs with commentary. If you'd like to see any of that, please let me know.